sewing tools and equipment small sewing tools and equipment it is a new day for Jim and Miss Lupita last week they discussed textile fabrics in a bid to understand what Jim will need to make t-shirts for the campaign trip today they intend to discuss items that Jim will need to get the job started let's find out Morning, Jim. Right on time. Hello, Miss Lupita. I am really psyched today. Mm -hmm. Soon, our group will be designing t-shirts. Can you believe that? Good to hear that. But there is still much more work to be done. Right now, you are only half-baked. Uh-huh. I know what you mean. Our principal at school uses that phrase quite a lot. Time to get fully baked. Wow. You really are psyched up this morning. All right, let's get started. Needlework or the art of sewing requires the use of special tools and equipment that have been carefully selected. The tools should be used rightfully and stored appropriately to prevent losses and frequent replacements. Time to group sewing equipment, since they are quite a lot. I see. My mother and I did the same thing for kitchen equipment. Mm. Small and large. Really? Let's begin with small then. Even though I haven't done needlework before, uh -huh. I guess needles, scissors, tape measures and thimble all belong to small sewing equipment. My mother uses them every time she's patching up my clothes. You have a very keen eye, Jim. Others are dressmaker's pins, tailor's chalk, measuring card, meter rule, tracing wheel, seam ripper, bodkin, and stiletto. Not to be confused with the stiletto for shoes, of course. Mm. This equipment will be of our main concern right now. So you're going to teach me how to use them? Eventually I will. But first, we have to discuss how to make the right choice of the tool or equipment, as well as proper way to use and care for them so that they do last long. There are charts for each equipment that I will show you in a short while. Are you talking about this? Yes. That is a cutting out shears. It is a type of scissors used by tailors to cut out pieces of fabric for sewing. They should be sharp, made of stainless steel, firm hinges with a comfortable handle that has one finger ring large enough to allow two or more fingers. And how long should be the blades? At least 15 centimeters. One of the blades should be painted. Why paint one blade? To help you hold the shears correctly. The shears should be held upright when cutting with the shaded blade on the lower side. The hinges should be oiled regularly and after use, they should be wiped and stored in a sheath or away from damp conditions. Mm. Caution! Do not misuse cutting out shears. For example, do not use them to cut hair paper or thread. Also, avoid dropping them as this will lead to spoilage. Wow. And this chart indicates here that the factors for choosing pinking and cutting out shears is the same. Good observation. You really are giving me an easy time. The two tools only differ in terms of use. Pinking shears is used to making edges, especially on open seams, neat. You say it's wrong to use cutting out shears for threads? We use embroidery scissors instead. This kind of scissors is also useful for snipping and sometimes cutting buttonholes. For efficiency, choose ones with sharp, fine pointed blades. Please, do not misuse or abuse them. I know that. Like uh, using them to cut fingernails, mm -hmm. hair or papers. That's right. So. If we have embroidery scissors, no need for buttonhole scissors, I guess. Actually, if you can afford it, buy buttonhole scissors, since it is the best suited for cutting buttonholes. However, it should have a sharp pointed blade 
and a screw that is easy to adjust. Hey, look. This one must be for cutting papers, as the name suggests. Yep. But the main function of paper scissors is for knitting seams. It has a characteristic zigzag edge. Oh. This one is not a scissor, but it has a blade. Is it also used for cutting? You mean the seam ripper? It is primarily used for removing unwanted stitches. It can also be used in place of buttonhole scissors. Hmm. To perform its work efficiently, ensure the blade is always sharp. Plus, handle it with care. That is, do not drop it as this can destroy the blade. When not in use, store properly in the needlework box. Well, well. What do you see in the next chart? Needles of different sizes, of course. Yes. Some are longer while others have sharper points than others. However, one thing is clear in all of them. Come on, look closely. You are right. They are generally sharp, mm -hmm. fine, uh -huh. made of stainless steel and uh, have smooth holes. Not holes, eyes. Oh. Your observation is quite accurate though. Needles should be easy to thread. To thread means to fix the thread through the eye of the needle. This is a lot of needles. Do you need all of them? Definitely. Each one has specific use. For example, for fine work, embroidery work we use crewels, and for synthetic and knitted fabrics we use ballpoint needles. Mm. Otherwise, when not in use, needles should be pinned in a special case or a soft cloth to ensure they are free from moisture and rust. Um, is this a bigger needle? No, 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 no. That is called a bodkin. Oh. You see, the eye is larger than that of a normal needle. Hmm. Uh, look at its points. It is not as sharp as that of a needle. So... What is its use then? It is used to thread elastic cords, ribbons, and tapes through casings or eyelet holes. And uh, this looks like a screwdriver. That is a stiletto. It is the tool a tailor uses to make hole and eyelets. It needs to be sharp and thick enough to leave holes on the fabric. It should be smooth as well to avoid spoiling the fabric. Interesting. Every day I learn something new. Talk about dressmaker pins. They are primarily used to hold fabrics in place while sewing or cutting patterns. They come in various lengths but should be fine and sharp, rust free and have uh, big heads like yours. <laughs> I like the size of my head though. It implies big brains. Okay. But why big head for the pin? It is to make them easy to press into the fabric before sewing. Mm. Anyway, give care to dressmaker's pin in the same manner that you use for needles. Say, uh, for example... Store them in rust-free conditions? Correct. Plus, they should be stored in a pin cushion or in a small box. And remove them from the work when cutting fabric or garment. Oh. These must be thimbles. My mother wears one on her finger when doing needlework so that uh, the needle does not hurt your finger. That's right. Uh, on which finger exactly? The middle finger. Correct again. Then make sure it is well fitting when buying. Plus, go for metallic thimbles as they last longer. Makes sense. I guess before cutting out a garment or fabric, we need to measure and mark first. Correct. Any idea of measuring tools used? Easy. I see tape measure. That is a meter stick. And measuring card. Excellent. Taylor's tape measure is used to measure width, lengths, and heights. It should be clearly marked on both sides up to 150 centimeters. It should also be firmly woven and plastic coated to avoid fraying and stretching. And the ends should be metallic. Caution! Always remove the tape measure from the work while cutting. Otherwise, 
you would end up cutting the tape measure. Mm. You should roll it up when not in use. Makes sense. Can you use a meter stick when you don't have a tape measure? Silly boy. A tailor and a tape measure are like fish and water. Very inseparable. Anyway, meter stick is used to measure long straight lines and to mark the length of a skirt. Are they only made of wood, as I can see? Nope. Others are metallic or plastic. But regardless of the material they are made of, mm -hmm. make sure the meter stick you are buying is marked clearly on both sides. And to prevent it from breaking, buckling or warping if it is wooden, store meter stick against the wall. Oh, look here. And this chart indicates the measuring card or gauge measures width such as hem depths and seam widths. What other information can you see, Jim? Uh, that uh, it should be made of firm material or card, uh, clearly notched at right angles and should have several measuring marks. And after use, it should be stored in an envelope and put in the needle work box. Great! While measuring, you will need to mark out the area before cutting out. Uh, want to take a guess what you need to do that? Um, tailor's chalk. That's right. It shows here it is used for marking patterns and comes in assorted colors. Nice shot. Do not drop them since they are brittle. Use chalk slightly. I mean, avoid drawing heavy lines on the fabric. Plus, store them in the needlework box after use. And the tracing wheel, is it also used for marking lengths to cut out? Nope. It is used for transferring pattern markings with the dressmaker's carbon or tracing paper. Its teeth should be well serrated and firmly fixed. Plus, go for ones with wooden handles as they are more durable than plastic handles. All right, so what's next? A walk to the tailor shop. We will grab some snacks on the way. Okay, boss.